Good evening, everybody. It's that time again. This is Smokey. Cleaning my pit. I got a um, catering gig this weekend. I have um, two cooks to do. I have one that has six briskets. Uh, they want me to slice it, deliver it to them. And I also have uh, another customer. I'm doing a full-blown catering. Uh, if you guys don't know yet, I live in South Texas, or South Central Texas, I should say. I live just south of San Antonio. And uh, I'm going to do brisket, sausage, rice, and beans. Typical South Central Mexican-style uh, food. So, um, just cleaning my pit right now, getting it ready. i got to clean up the firebox, put all the ashes out of there. Um, still debating if I'm going to move it to a different location. Well, not location, but I should say a different spot at my property where I'm going to cook. But, uh, man, if the wind stays like this out of the south, I think I'm actually going to leave it there. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I, I just got to go clean the the uh, firebox, put all the ashes out, get it ready to go. I have all my wood sliced already. I'll show you a picture of that here in a little bit. or talk about my wood, what kind of wood I use and everything, how I like it sliced. Not slide, but I should say chopped or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then uh, later on this afternoon, I'm going to start trimming the briskets. I believe I have 16 briskets to do. Yeah, 16 briskets. So, she likes the meat. So, we'll see. Hold on, right there. She likes the meat. Uh, we we'll see if, uh 16 is gonna be no, uh, no yeah 16 is not gonna be no problem with her i've had 20 20 briskets on her 25 briskets at one time for another uh fundraising event i did but uh it all depends on the size of the brisket so um i'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride hey guys uh have any questions or anything of what i'm doing or why i'm doing it or how i'm doing it or whatever any comments or anything you would do different hey Leave it down there below. I'm, I'm not going to get hurt. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I mean, just <clears throat> make a conversation, right? It may be something that you uh, comment down there. be a better idea. If I like it, who knows? I might use it. Or maybe something that I'm doing that you don't do. Maybe you learn something too. Who knows? I'm not here to judge anybody. All right, guys. So you guys stay tuned. I'm getting ready to hook up my truck to the pit. Then later on, like I said, with the wood and all the uh, trimming. So, you guys stay tuned. All right. All right, guys. Let's talk about my firewood that I use. I use uh, mesquite. Uh, mesquite is uh, very easy to get a hold of here in South Texas, Central Texas. Uh, so is oak. Uh, oak is uh, more expensive than the uh, mesquite because... Uh, you know, oak burns longer and burns hotter. I've never cooked with oak. You know, I don't know what kind of uh, flavor profile that gives. I've heard it's real good, uh, but I've never used it on my in my cooks because I always have an abundance of um, mesquite. But I do have oak over there just in case I need more firewood to finish a cook. I have some oak there, so it's there, there for backup. So my uh, mesquite, I get it for free most of the time. Every so often I'll pay, uh, I'll go pick up a truckload or so. I don't pay too much. I have a, a long wheel base, so he, he gives me a good discount. Um, so they're sliced, or they're cut with a chainsaw, you know, about 12 to 18 inches. See, that one there is a little bit longer, but it'll still fit in my firebox. So I'll shop it, throw it into this black container here. The uh, reason I do that is I close it, I'll lock it, and it'll keep the rain from getting in there. Um, I do know the moisture will go in, but if it rains, it'll, it'll keep the rain out. That's, that's perm the primary use of my black container I have, a little black tote. So anywhere I go for a cook-off or I'm cooking here at the house, I'll fill up this uh, 
it's back to the way it is and it should be uh, enough to get my cook going for a few hours this wood will probably last me about five to six hours uh, if not I'll get I got my uh, my uh, supply not too far from here that like 40 50 feet and I'll just put in a wagon and bring it over here A whole bunch of yellow jackets. I wonder where they're coming from. I wonder they're here on the other side that so the receiver hitch right there. Because this trailer has uh that hitch there that they can go in there. I don't know if you catch that yellow jacket. Let me see. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Well, I guess you know what I gotta do now. Yeah, like I was saying, those yellow jackets are no joke, man. They come at you, they're gonna beat you up, man. No matter how fast you run or you roll or whatever, they're gonna get you. Yeah, so everybody from Texas knows what I'm talking about. I don't know other states what they have, what you guys have up there. I don't know if yellow jackets are native to your area but i'm sure everybody has their bees or what wasp or whatever so comment below guys i want to know i'm just thinking about it i want to know what bugs or wasp bees or whatever bite you and hurt if they sting you yeah drop that below i want to know i want to know i'm curious all right there you have it that's basically it uh, it usually takes me about 30, 30 minutes or so. Uh, it took me a little bit longer this time around because I'm filming uh, the process. But it usually takes me about 30 minutes. If I have somebody out here talking with me or whatever, it'll take me a little bit longer. But usually I'm by myself, so it takes me about 30 minutes. I already know what I need to do. I know the step. So, All right, guys. So I want to know what do you do to prep your pit for cooks? Uh, do you clean it? uh after the last cook you done or do you like me i just i clean it before my cooks uh, the inside is good it's seasoned i don't mess with the inside unless it, i really really need to all right guys i'm not gonna go too terribly crazy on these okay I have 16 briskets to, to trim. Probably gonna show you one or two that I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna be putting this, this deco fat here. Let me see if I can lift it up so you guys could see the inside. There it is, all oh, this right here. <clears throat> I'm gonna take it all out. I'm gonna trim the back a little bit. I don't know like it needs too much trimming. <clears throat> There ain't no competition cooks. It's gonna be for a catering event, so I'm not gonna go too crazy on it. It's not too hard to uh, trim the briskets. I mean, you just trim all the hard white fat that's in between the two muscles, between the point and the flat. Then I trim out the stuff that I myself wouldn't eat. And you don't want your customers to eat stuff that you wouldn't eat. So this is, I'd be, be okay with leaving some of this here, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. I got 16 to do, pretty good number. This meat, um, 
that you're cutting off the meat and some of the fat, especially when you do your trimming for the uh, cook-offs. Uh, you're gonna trim off some lot of meat, some of this fat. And you can use this meat to make up some uh, chili. You can use this meat to make, uh, a lot of people like to get the trimmings and make um, hamburgers. I've never done that. Because I'm always in a hurry, in a rush to get things done. This time is money, you know. But you could do that. I mean, you could trim it up, and once you get all the all the fat out of there. Uh oh, I need to sharpen my knife. But you get all that fat out of there, and that meat you use when you uh, the meat that you lose when you're doing the competition trimming style, and you could. Uh, Turn around and make some hamburgers, especially if you do a cook offs You know, a lot of people use prime. You use prime meat, or you can use uh, the uh, Wagyu briskets. I'm sure they'll make some excellent uh, excellent hamburger. Grind, grind it down and make some. Hamburgers up. You can put some your favorite burger seasoning on it and throw it in the pit. So another thing we have to do: clean the beans. Clean the beans. There's enough beans here for 200 people, hopefully. Not too bad. Early, early morning. 15, 30 in the morning. Get fired in. There you go. All 16. Get ready to take a bath. Well, there you go, guys. Another successful catering event in the books. A lot of happy customers the gentleman and his family that uh, hired me to do this event for them they uh thumbs up all the way around so that's good um i did not get any videos or any pictures of the food uh, at the venue i do apologize for those of you that do catering you guys understand you don't have time of much uh, you gotta get there, you gotta find out where you're gonna be set up, unload everything, set up everything the way you want it, and you start serving. By the time you know it, you're already cleaning up stuff, throwing it in the back of your vehicle, and going home. So, um, but um, it, was, it was a good event. I mean, I'm not complaining. A lot of cards were handed out. Um, a lot of possibilities there for catering events in the future so uh, that's a good thing but uh i do have a catering this uh, coming weekend it's a graduation party for my cousin uh they want me to cook uh roughly 10 to 15 briskets i'm not sure yet until they bring them to me on wednesday but um i'm just here everything's cleaned up so i just want to go ahead and finish this video for you guys edit it and put it online so you guys could see it so uh man if you guys cater if you have any um comments ideas or whatever of how you do things put it down there put it down there and maybe uh we could learn something together but uh there's my pit and i need i need to find a name for that pit i don't, I don't know what i'm gonna name her yet so uh this pit let me see this pit right here it belongs to my little brother. That's not mine. It's a good pit, though. It's heavy. It's a good pit. But anyways, guys, remember, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Laters.